until the computer. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Ask a Catholic Therapist. It's been a while. Uh, Dr. Matt Bruinger here. And I'm here with my good friend and colleague, um, Isaac, Isaac Wicker. Hello. And uh, we're excited today. We wanted to talk a little bit about Advent and this beautiful Advent program that we um, have developed and just lay the groundwork for preparing our minds and our hearts for Advent, which is just around the corner, actually. And we're really close, three weeks out. And I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, this has been an incredibly busy season of life. Um, a lot of moving pieces, personally, professionally, um, opportunities for discernment, and um, and just, I know I can go into Advent, given how th stressful things are, I can go into Advent um, sort of frayed and chaotic um, and, and not get as much out of it as I, I want to. Or if I take a little bit of time now and, and I'm intentional about that season, um, it can reorient me reorient, or reorient my mind and heart so that I'm like ready to receive the gift of the incarnation. And so anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about Advent, a little bit about our program and, um, I'm excited to have Isaac here, man. I, Isaac and I haven't actually had a chance to hang out or talk in quite some time. So how are you doing, man? I'm doing really well. Yeah, it's been a, a really <clears throat> probably intense but beautiful season and just feel like I'm in a period where I'm growing a lot mm. in so many different ways, growing as a dad, growing as a husband, growing as... um a therapist and as an entrepreneur and just really loving it. Like so many ways I'm being stretched, but at the same time feeling very held um, by the Lord and like entering a new season of surrender. That's mm. really accompanied with growth. Usually my p seasons of growth are much more like me like self-oriented, like on my own efforts, but it feels like this period of growth is really founded on surrender, which has been a, a profound experience for me. So now we've talked in the past. You, you really like the surrender novena. Yeah. Are you still praying yeah. it? Yeah. I've been praying it for like a year straight now. <laughs> it's render thing down, man. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and I need it every time I need yeah. it every single morning. Yeah. So. Um, so Advent, we're getting, we're, we're going into Advent, the Advent season. Yeah. And, uh, anything you're particularly dreading or looking forward to? I'm hungry for it. Um, I was just thinking about it as we were preparing to talk is um, like, just like you're saying, there's so many ways for our hearts to get chaotic and to, to feel frayed and like unsettled. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so beautiful that the, the church gives us seasons. It's like every time I come to Advent now, I'm hungry for it. I'm like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to like hibernate a little bit and use that time to have like space yeah. to, to like settle back into my life and remember what my foundation is um, and remember to look for the Lord's coming and rejoice in the Lord's coming as like, as the orientation of my life. So I'm, I'm hungry for it. Yeah. It's funny. It's, it's a period of waiting and it seems to me that, um, especially when I'm feeling stressed and overwhelmed and, um, I'm not particularly patient and I don't like waiting. Mm -hmm. And so, but the irony, it seems to me, or the, not the irony, but the paradox of, of Advent is, um, if I can really step into that waiting even more, if I can if, if I can heighten it, if I can, if I can let the church do what she wants to do, if I can let the liturgical season like deep in my waiting, not just sort of like, oh yeah, I'm waiting, but like become aware of it and uh, enter into that waiting, feeling the contours of it, paying attention to it. Yeah. Uh, waiting can be uncomfortable in some ways, but it, it heightens an anticipation. It heightens a deep and profound anticipation. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's 
because I've been thinking about different Advent stuff as uh, we've been preparing for this program. And along those lines, I was thinking, what do we even wait for anymore? Um, it seems like the main thing we wait for is like we wait for the birth of children. We wait, we wait for like wedding days. Um, I'm waiting to get rich. That's right. But so much in our culture, like tries to cut away every place where we wait. Like our culture says, don't wait for your wedding day. Don't build anticipation. Don't build expectation and like prepare your heart. Move in together. Do that now. Like try to hasten to just like the, the fastest thing, right? Um, and so we don't know how to wait very well. <laughs> we just haven't been trained. We haven't been trained to live in a place of expectation that we keep open. To, to have a desire that's open, um, but still waiting, still waiting to be filled. I'm waiting for you to laugh harder at my jokes. Yeah, you can, you can keep waiting. Yeah, <laughs> But it, there's an open expectation around that waiting. It's really beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. You know, growing up for me, for uh, like we even had to wait for um, our TV shows, right? There were commercials waited for the net right the next segment and then you had to wait in between those segments for the next episode and um with online streaming i mean very little amazon prime it's two days in big cities you can get like two to three hours you can prime stuff so yeah we're not used to waiting we're not good at waiting but it seems like the church actually in her wisdom recognizes that um, to enter into this waiting fully and to deepen it and to heighten it um, will actually allow us to see more clearly and to experience more profoundly uh, the celebration of the incarnation, right? Of this, of Christmas. Yeah. And so, um, well, let me ask this. So folks who want to do our program, what can they expect? They can, so I, I think it's a really amazing program. And like when I was talking about being hungry for Advent, what led up to the program was many years where I went into Advent really hungry for Advent, and then two days into Advent, forgot all about Advent, and then got to Christmas. And I was just like, okay, I just continued to live my chaos. And so I built the like we built the program but like i was really excited to build the program because i was like i actually really need help <laughs> living this season that i i really want to i have go into it with so much desire every year and i fall off every single year so a big part of it that just the program offers is accountability like it's just like yeah you want to show up to advent this is like a structured way to show up to advent um like thinking about the Lenten season, it's like we have this season of like suffering with the Lord, but we we pick a specific way to do it. We're like, okay, I'm going to give this up and I'm going to go to Stations of the Cross and I'm going to like, I'm, I have my events planned in there. Um, and so that's really helpful to maintain a long-term season of, of, of work. And so a big part of what ad, this program offers is just structure, expectation, like accountability, a place where you're going to show up, a place that you like that actually asks something of you. And then by asking it of you um, allows you to, to really stay true to what you, you wanted to do in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and we, you know, we have a cohort mod, sort of a cohort style mod. So um, we gather once a week um, on a call and there's a little bit of instruction or, um, but I think what's nice about that is you get to, you get to know people a little bit mm -hmm. and you get to recognize that you're sort of journeying together in this. Um, and so while, while there are exercises and things to do each week on your own, to maintain that structure, there is a coming together as a sort of community of folks doing this program, um, ourselves included. I mean, yeah. maybe one of the beauties for me is that we get to do it with the, the cohort. 
yeah. participate. I mean, this is not, um, while I think we've built something beautiful and we bring a certain knowledge and background to it, um, we're, we're a part of it as well. And yeah. we're, we're as in much need of what we're, what we're walking through as yeah. the people walking through it. Yeah. That's what I, I've been loving. Uh, I've got uh, several different thoughts here, but one is like what I love about doing this work of being really able to integrate faith and psychology and, and walk with people through these programs is it's so clear that the Lord leads. Like I show up as somebody who's needy, <laughs> as somebody who like really is hungry. And so I'm not coming to expecting to like fulfill all the needs of everybody that's showing up, but I'm just like, look, the Lord is coming. Like he is, he is coming to fill us. And yeah. so I get to be in the same like eager space. Um, just like the disciples and the feeding of the 5,000. It's like, well, I'm hungry too. <laughs> like yeah. I want to eat too, but then I get to like watch the Lord. Like this is how he feeds. And I get to, he calls me particularly to, to participate in that. Um, but it's so clearly his work. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So for, um, do you want to lay out the, it's your mom. It's my mom. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. I do have your car keys. <laughs> You're going to be on our YouTube channel, Mrs. Wicker. <laughs> oh, sorry. Goodbye. Thank you for coming. <laughs> She's amazing. She uh, is amazing. Yeah. Your mom's a legend. Uh, what what maybe people on our YouTube channel, my YouTube channel don't know is that uh, Isaac's mom has been probably our biggest supporter, gone through all of our programs. That's right. And, and I don't think she's a liar. Uh, so she has been oh, wow. really impressed by, and really appreciated all of our programs. That's right. So um, I take her word, her word has some weight in our circles. And she's done some of them multiple times. Uh, she's done our Advent program twice. She's done my whole Human Challenge program twice. And each time she just like gained so much from it. And I'm like, wow. Like, cause I, I respect her. Like I, she is one of the wiser, holier men or women, not men, wiser, holier women <laughs> that I know. And so it's just like to be able to walk with her in that way is is actually a really profound grace that that's awesome and a surprising gift on all this. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, and I guess one thing that's worth mentioning with our program is um, I think it, it's, this is something that's really important to us. And it's, we say it sort of every time, but even though there is a, a price that there's a cost um, just because it takes us away from our families and we put time into developing it, um, we never want costs to be prohibitive and we never want costs to prevent people from being able to experience this stuff. So our policy, our good steward policy is always, if you reach out to us, you tell us what you can afford. And, uh, that's, that's that. And in that way, the Lord has always provided for us and how, and the work we've done. And yeah. so, um, but I feel, I feel a growing, I feel a growing excitement for this in my own life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to mention two more things, yeah. getting more of the practicals. So another major element of the work we we invite people into for the Advent program, we do like a silent night routine. So each of the weeks of Advent, we ask you three nights a week to turn off all technology, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and then turn off all electric lights and go into candlelight mode uh, starting at 9 p.m. So that's three nights a week we really actually enter into this the spirit of expectation and waiting and lack um and stepping away from all the overstimulation that that so often draws us so that's an, a really important part because it's a practical way to wait because i can wait usually i wait for things by distracting myself until the thing happens um and, and I don't actually build expectation, but to wait really by opening up space and be like, Lord, I need you come. Um, and then we, then we face ourselves in a new way. We face our need in a new way, our desire. So yes. 
that's one part, part that's really important. And then the other, it might be obvious, but we really work to incorporate um, the, the full vision of faith with the tools of psychology. And I was reflecting on that today um, and why I like it so much. I think what it does for me so well is it allows us to bring up, to bring to the forefront our wounds while proposing a true, concrete, beautiful response. So mm. thinking of Advent, like, why are we waiting? Like, we're almost waiting with these big desires open, these big wounds open. And then the Lord comes to that place. He wants to come to our place of woundedness, to our place of desire. Um, so he comes into a world full of wound and desire mm. for him. And so what we get to do through psychology and faith work combined is it, it it gives us really good tools to to open up places that we don't like to be open but then it it allows for such a an opportunity for grace mm -hmm. to show us something new so i i wanted to highlight that too with with the yeah. program is yeah that that we really bring our full self we don't we don't grow in hope because we pretend like bad things aren't happening or because we pretend like we don't have big questions or that we pretend like we're not disappointed or hurt but we grow in hope by like opening that place up which is really scary and then receiving the full response of god who's like i'm here i'm coming um and and that is really where we can found long term hope yeah yeah, I think it's great. And that's always the thing for me that I love about sort of, yeah, our, our collaborations and doing work um, in the space that I like to do work is bringing the two together, mm -hmm. bringing these two together, the deep and rich, uh, the positive faith, but allowing us to bring our full being to, to bear yep. as well. And um and I think our program does this. I think it invites a deep and profound sort of emotional and psychological. Um, it invites us to present ourselves fully in those dimensions of our being. But at the same time, it's a program that relies heavily on scripture and, um, and recognizing that our Lord wants to come into the concrete realities and particular existences of our lives. Like mm -hmm. Christ doesn't just come at large. Yeah. He doesn't come... Yep. right in a general way christ comes into the particular concreteness of right yeah a baby and that baby is a particular and concrete relationship with me mm -hmm. um, that incarnation comes and touches me in my particulars my personality my temperament my hurts my wounds my yeah. and so i think we invite that unique personal like bring yourself yeah recognize how how theology and faith bears upon that yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Beautiful. Yeah. Like we, like our first, the first thing we talk about is hope. Um, but we can sometimes fall into this trap of talking about hope just as like a general blanket. There's hope, like good news. Um, but when you're talking about particulars, if, if I'm talking about hope for me, like right away, all of my disappointments are going to come to the surface of like, yeah, how can I actually trust that? I'm actually really skeptical of hope. I I'm, I've been hurt. I've been disappointed so many yeah. times and you want to proclaim hope to me. Yep. Like, hey, that sounds like a great story, but for me to actually feel that hope, it's almost like I have to bring my disappointment and like, be really honest. Like, Hey, I've been disappointed a lot. We're, we're in a world that marketing promises to solve every problem and we've fallen into that a million times and we're like this is just great marketing i'm not i'm not <laughs> convinced yeah. um my christmas presents are going to do more for me on christmas than jesus is and like we if we're able to really bring that then then we can be responded to the lord can respond yeah. to us in in that particular place of pain in the reality yeah in the reality yeah. but if i just try to like throw that away and say like, no, this is good news. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited about Jesus. Yeah. Um, and don't just honestly say, I'm kind of disappointed and skeptical and all my other advents have kind of sucked. And how do I know 
that Jesus is is this real fulfillment that he proclaims to be. Yeah. Um, bring that. Yeah. Bring that. Yeah, the phrase, um, I've probably said this many times, but I love uh, Pope Benedict's papal motto was cor ad cor loquitor, heart speaking to heart. Mm-hmm. And when I think about that, the image I get of that is sort of a deep and profound vulnerability that um, our heart speaks to our Lord's heart. Um, but sometimes my heart speaks when it's speaking, honestly, um, it's sharing disappointment and discouragement and frustration and overwhelmedness. And, and so, um, but, but that's where, tra- like, that's where transformation takes place. Christ can yeah. transform and touch what's real, but he can't like transform the mask that I present to him. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I think about the, the Israelites it seemed like when they got in trouble wasn't when they cried out to God every time they cried out to God and like actually complained directly to God he responded he's like all right Moses give him some water um or whatever it was but then when they're stuck grumbling amongst themselves grumbling like turned inward then then they get in a whole bunch of trouble they they turn from God even if their heart is complaining but turn towards God God is responding God is engaging. God is actually feeding his people. But it's like when we when we instead stick in ourselves and grumble, yes. uh, that we get in a lot of trouble. That seems right to me. Yeah. yeah. And so what we yeah, what we want to present here is an opportunity for people to bring themselves and over four weeks, right? It's a four-week program. Each week has a particular focus, a particular um particular uh, virtue that it focuses on and yep. but we're going to grow together as a community by bringing ourselves and the reality of our our current hearts yep. to 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 bear and so um let me ask this question two two final questions for you that you might be able to answer what about people who've already done it who are like ah, i did it last year been there done that Yep. I, I was thinking about this today with something completely separate. Um, I had a friend, like I was just struggling with the thing I struggle with, like a lot of my self doubts or whatever it is, any insecurities. And my friend told me something that was really helpful. Um, basically he said, like when, when you're focused on yourself, it gets really confusing when you focus on others, like you can see so much more. Like there's more grace. I've heard that so many times. Mm -hmm. It wasn't helpful because I heard it for the first time. It was helpful because it was true and spoke to what I needed to hear. (laughs) And the things that are true and I need to hear, I need to hear them like a million times. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the church gives us the same seasons every year because we need them every year. Um, So that's what I would say is if you've done it before, like, if you need to hear it again, come hear it again. <laughs> yeah. There's more for you. Yeah. What about people that are apprehensive about the time commitment? I mean, um, I'm stressed. I'm busy. I'm, and somebody says, come do one more thing. And I no. think, I'm not sure I have it in me. Uh, to be honest, like I'm not sure I have it in me to do one more thing. Yeah. What, what, do, what do we say to people who are, who are there? Yeah. Um, I'd say a lot of that, like there's, there's something in that that's really important and fair to look at. Um, the part of you that is just like worn out by life. Um, but what is going to refill that? Is it, is it you having an hour more on Sunday? Like, are you actually going to replenish because you have an hour more on Sunday or because you look at technology more during the week? Are you replenishing yourself because you're a little bit more productive in the evening? Or do you want to allow the Lord to replenish you? Do you want to set aside your own independence here and your own hyperproductivity and allow the Lord to bring about rest? Because we're actually really bad at, at resting ourselves. We're really bad at replenishing ourselves. And so 
okay, if, if really practically you don't have time, that's okay. There's always grace. There's always mercy. But if it's just that you feel overworked and you are worn out, oh, come rest. Come rest with us. Yeah, that's great. That's great. How can people find more about this program? Yeah. Where, where, so do, we, where do we direct we'll, them? We'll have the link in the description, right, Matt? Uh, Smash that <laughs> like button. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and um, otherwise, you can... The website is wholehumanchallenge.com slash advent. Um, so wholehumanchallenge.com slash advent. Um, yeah, I think that's that's going to be the place to start. Yeah. And look, again, please share this far and wide. Share this far and wide because um, what we want is we want to provide people with an opportunity um, to deepen this anticipation and this weight in a structured way, in a communal way with one another so that we can come together and really appreciate the incarnation to experience it more deeply and more profoundly and in a new way than we ever have before. Yeah. And so um, that's our invitation. Our invitation is join us as we do this, journey with us, walk with us, and hopefully as we bring ourselves, make ourselves present through these four weeks, we'll experience a profound new radical experience yeah. of God's grace in our lives. Yeah. And we want to, we want to journey with you. We, yeah. want to, we want to walk with you. Yeah. And I've been telling people that God fills all the space that we leave open for him. Um, and so often we don't leave space open for him and he doesn't have a place to fill, but if we make the space, he fills. Beautiful. So please share this far and wide with friends, with family, um, again, uh, money, we don't want money to be an obstacle. So, um, share this and don't worry that, um, you know, that there's a price tag on it. Um, you're making it sound like a scary price. It's forty nine dollars. Yeah, it's not a scary price. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is like ten, fifteen dollars a week, something like that. Um, and you get a workbook, right? We have a beautiful digital workbook that we've created and has exercises in it. It has plays for um, journal prompts, reflections, questions. So, um, I think it is more than a reasonable price. Uh, but I know that yeah. we're in all sorts of different situations, especially going into Christmas, and so. Um, yeah, join us and yeah. invite others to join us. And let's see what the Lord wants to do. Praise God. Of waiting. Yeah. Isaac Wicker, thanks for joining me as always. Always great. Take care of yourself, Matt. Hey, what's your mom's name? Remind me of your mom. Mom's name? Beatrice. Shout out to Beatrice for <laughs> showing up on the channel today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. One day we'll have to interview her one of these days. I don't know if she'd be open to it. I, I've asked her to be on my podcast and she's like, nah, but maybe I'll you ask can her. Get... I'll ask yeah. her. <laughs> Thanks for joining, man. I appreciate you. Take care, man. All right.